I'm Jenny Fish with JennyFishKnits.com and welcome to the Boucle Pocket Scarf Knit Along. Originally, this scarf was knit with this amazing Boucle yarn. However, it's been discontinued. So guess what? Goodbye. Now we're going to make it with another yarn. So it's a very versatile pattern. If you have a bulky weight yarn, which is the number five, you can do this. It took me three skeins of Cascade 128 Superwash to make this amazing lemon drop yellow color. Oh, look at this. It's so comfy cozy. And the pockets are great. Come on. Built-in pockets on a scarf. If you're a knitter like me, pop your yarn into one side, pop your knitting needles into the other side, get where you're going, and you can knit right there. How exciting is that? I love it. I love this scarf. I am going to show you from start to finish how to make this amazing scarf. We are going to cast on, create the pocket. The pocket is knit as you go. Steam it up later. All in one piece. We're going to knit, knit, knit. I am going to show you how to bind off. I'm going to show you how to cast on three different ways. Yes, it's simple. It's easy. Follow along with me. I'm going to show you how to weave in ends, how to fix a drop stitch, how to bind off, bind off last stitch fix. There's so much you're going to learn in this. How we go from this to something we can knit from. First of all, I'm going to untwist it, kind of straighten it out a little bit. And then I'm going to use this thing right here. It's called a swift. I'm going to put this on here. that up just a little bit. Yarn swift and it's going to hold my yarn. I'm going to go through and make sure that everything is straight. Now this tank is tied right here. So I'm going to go through, find where it's tied. Sometimes you can just pull that little knot out and then sometimes you just need to snip it. Sometimes there'll be other pieces, places where the pieces are tied together. And on this one, I can just pop that right off there. Find and here it is. Then I go over here to my ball winder. Move my chair up here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, so I have this tension bar here. I'm gonna wrap it around, and then there's slots inside this cone area right here. Slide that in there. So your first couple of rounds, you want to go super slow. Make sure everything is getting attached where it's supposed to be. And these attach to the table with grippers down here. You can see this one right here has a little screw that you tighten up and it just clips onto your table. The same with the ball winder or yarn winder or wool winder. It has other names. And then yeah, just wind. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on winding. And then when I'm done, um, I'll be back and show you what it looks yeah. like. So one other thing I want to address as we talk about ball winding and buying yarn in general, there is an industry standard of around three to four knots in a ball of yarn. And this is standard practice. It is an acceptable practice, I guess, is more of the term I should use. Um, you will find knots in your yarn, and that's inevitable occasionally because of how the yarn is manufactured. In this Hank of yarn, I found one knot, and instead of just keeping it in my work, I instead wound two balls. I cut the knot, started again. Um, that way, I know when a knot is coming up or when there was a knot, and I can just address that when I'm knitting instead of having to be instead of knitting along and coming up to the knot and going, Oh no, now I know I just have two separate balls of yarn here, and I'll continue working on and join in the new yarn when I get to it instead of that surprise knot in the ball. That's just an option. Okay, so now that we've talked about the yarn, let's talk about the needles. I'm using um, I do. US 10 and a half or a 6.5 millimeter. That is the yarn, uh, the needle size that I'm using. Uh, it's circular needle, so it has a cord. For this one, you can use straight needles if you have those or you can use one, a circular needle that has a cord on it. And the cord length really isn't going to be that important on this one. Um, I'd say 24 
inches or longer, 16 inches, because we're just going to be knitting back and forth. We're not knitting in the round. I just prefer these. They're more of a universal type knitting the needle. The pattern, I'll, if you don't have it already, I'll leave a link in the description box below where you can purchase the pattern. Stitch marker might be handy, scissors, and a tapestry needle. Those are your supplies. This doesn't take much. This is a very simple project. So let's get started. So to start off with, I'm going to use a long tail cast on. I'm casting on 40 stitches. So I'm going to figure that out by wrapping my yarn around my needle. Each wrap represents a stitch. This is going to tell me where to start my cast on. I'm at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 10 stitches approximately. And then there's 20 and 20 and 20 is 40. So I'm going to start right about here, make my slip knot. The tail is going to go towards my body and the working yarn is going to be up front. Slide my needle in from right to left and cinch up that long tail cast on. And again, I want the tail going towards my body, the yarn going up. I'm going to take my finger, my index finger and my thumb and make this like okay symbol. Slide that through. I'm going to take the three fingers in back and wrap around and grab all the yarn. So I'm leaving these two fingers through and wrapping with the last three fingers. Then I'm pulling out like a slingshot. So it's wrapped around my thumb, going from the inside of my palm out and around my thumb, and then around my index finger is going between my middle finger and my index finger and around to the top of my index finger. So it looks like this. This is called the slingshot. I'm gonna take my right hand and go under the strand like I'm scratching my thumb, then I'm coming around and I'm going from up, down, capturing that, and then I'm going back through the loop. So again, it's swoop up, around, down, and through, up, down, around, through, just like this. This is called the long tail cast on. Now I'm gonna cast on 40 stitches. 40 and then look at that tail all right that's good that was a good cast on I'm gonna look down here everything looks nice so now what we're gonna do is simply work in garter stitch we're gonna work in garter stitch for around eight inches garter stitch is where you knit every stitch on every row so that's pretty simple here I'm gonna go ahead and insert my needle into the first stitch from front the back. I will show you how I strand or how I tension my yarn. I wrap it around my ring finger and then I bring my index finger up, wrap around the back of the needle, bring it through. Now I've created this new stitch. I can let this stitch off the needle. Insert into the next stitch, wrap my yarn around, and through. And I'm going to go all the way across these 40 stitches doing exactly that same thing for every stitch. That is the knit stitch. At the end of this row, this is my last stitch. I'm going to go ahead and knit that like normal. Now at this point, I have knit all the stitches off my left needle. I'm going to swap hands. So now all the stitches are in my left hand. This is now my left needle and this is now my right needle. You'll notice there's a purl bump underneath there. That is the reverse side of a knit stitch. We want it to look like that. Now we're going to knit into this first stitch. And we will knit all the way across. We are currently on the wrong side row. This is row two and we're just knitting each stitch. Okay, this is the last stitch on row two. Now I'm gonna turn it over. At this point, I do like to take a locking stitch marker and mark my spot so that I know this is my right side, just down here in the fabric. This is a locking stitch marker. See how it looks like a little safety pin? I'm gonna go ahead and slide that into here. That's gonna mark my right side. I also know this is my right side because I used a long tail cast on and my tail is over here. Now I'm just going to continue knitting in garter stitch until this piece is eight inches long and I'll meet you back here after I've gotten that to the right side. Here we go. So we knit for about eight inches. 
Now I want to show you how we go from here to here. We are going to bind off 10 stitches, work 20 stitches, and bind off another. So here's my sample that I was knitting on earlier. I was going to knit all 8 inches and show you, but I thought, you know what? I have the finished example. I can show you what it looks like there, and then I can show you how to get there. So you can pause this video and come back when you're there and ready to do this. You knit 2 stitches. Then you lift the first stitch up and over the second stitch. Knit into the next stitch, lift the first stitch up and over. So that makes two. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. nine and ten then we're going to go ahead and knit 19 stitches so there's one two three i want 20 stitches on this needle so i'm going to go with four because there's four there five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now I want to bind off the rest of these stitches. Knit one. Whoops, knit two. <laughs> then lift that up and over. There's one. Two, three, four. I'll just continue on until I've bound off all of these stitches. I have this last stitch here. Now I also like to show you another little trick that I like to do for this last stitch. See how that's kind of out there on its own? I'll go down underneath that stitch, actually right into here. See that? Into this hole right here, and I'll just make a new stitch. Bring that up, knit those two stitches together, and then bind off. It gives a little bit more structure on this end here instead of that last stitch going a little wonky. That's kind of it's called the last stitch fix and it may bump out just a little bit but it keeps it from being wobbly and wonky and then um, so I have this one stitch left here I'm gonna snip my yarn break my yarn pull it through there we go now I'm gonna turn around and I will join in new yarn And to join in new yarn, you stick your needle into that first stitch, wrap your yarn around, bring it through, and just start knitting. I'll weave these ends in later. Just like this. So now I'll continue knitting in garter stitch until my piece gets to be the length that I want it. I'm bring in my other example here. So that is pocket one where I cast on, knit, 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 44 inches. Then we go to making the second pocket. So now we need to go from having 20 stitches on our needle to back to 40. So now I'm gonna show you how we do that. My, the inches that I wanted for me, 44 inches. Then I'm gonna do a backwards loop cast on to cast on those 10 stitches on this side and the backwards loop cast on you use your thumb and you come through so I wrap the, the yarn around the outside of my thumb and down to my palm and make that loop on here so there's one two three four five six seven 
eight, nine, 10. Then turn my work over. Now I'm a firm believer that when you use a backward loop cast on, if you purl the next row, it kind of secures that stitch and makes it a little bit more professional looking. Um, so I'm just going to purl those first 10 stitches now that I've turned my work. So those 10 stitches that I just cast on using a backwards loop cast on, now I'm gonna purl those back. So there's one, two, three, Now I'm back to the stitches that I had on my needle. I'm going to knit across those 20 stitches. Show you, I just finished knitting those 20. I turned my work around. That's very important at this point. Turn your work around. And now we are gonna do a knitted cast on. We're gonna make 20 of those. Insert my needle into the stitch as if to knit. Wrap around. Now, instead of pushing this stitch off the needle, I'm leaving it there. I'm pulling the loop through, twisting, and I'm putting it back on the needle. So there's one. Then I'm gonna knit into that stitch, bring it through, twist it, pop it back on. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So now I'm back to 40 stitches on my needle and I'm going to continue working in garter stitch for another eight inches. Then I'll be ready to bind off. So we'll go ahead and just work in garter stitch for another eight inches. Now we're making pocket two, just like this. And notice after I did that knitted cast on, I did not need to flip. It was ready for me just to start knitting. In the beginning, we talked about how sometimes there's knots in your yarn and I chose to separate those out and wind them into individual balls. I wanna show you how to add in um, a new ball of yarn because some of you may not know how to do that. So I'm knitting along and I just have this much left from that ball and I need to add in my next ball right here. I like to do it on the end of a row um, so I may waste just a little bit of yarn to be able to do this on the end of the row, but I prefer to do that. And if you can, you know, it, it's, it's preferable. It's easier to weave it in on the edges than in the middle, but I'm going to show you a little trick. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to have enough yarn left, this little piece right here to get me all the way across so I could end on this side. So here's a trick. Take your yarn, how much you have left. So I have this much left, that's the center point. Put a little slip knot here, just like that, okay? Now, go ahead and start knitting. Knit until you hit that slip knot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and knit. There we go. So you knit until you hit that slip knot. Now remember, I put that slip knot in when I have half my yarn left, okay? I'm coming up on my slip knot right now. 
there's the slip knot. So I now know I am less than halfway across. I do not have enough yarn to finish this. If I had hit the slip knot over here, then I knew, okay, I have enough to finish this row, but I, I hit the slip knot here. I don't have enough room to finish this row. So now I make the decision, do I wanna tink back, which means take these stitches out and start my new ball of yarn on the side, or do I wanna just go until I have a long enough tail, which that's about a long enough tail, and start in the middle? Okay, I like to go on the side, so I'm going to tink back or knit backwards, which means I'm gonna take my left needle, I'm gonna put it in the stitch below the one that's knitted on the right needle, and slide that stitch over and pull it out. That's tinking, that's to knit backwards. So now I'm at the end of my row. And to add another ball of yarn, I'm just going to simply put my needle into that first stitch, grab the yarn from the other ball, slide it around, and start knitting. And then I'll weave those ends in later. Now let's say I'm here and I've decided not to tink back and start on the edge. And I'm like, okay, I want to use, um, I want to be sparing with my yarn. So I've knit to here. My yarn has run out. I'm just gonna go ahead and clip this yarn. Oh, my yarn ran out. Oh no, what do I do? Well, in this case, I need to add in new yarn. So I'll leave that tail there and I will grab my yarn and start knitting and just keep knitting with it right in the middle. Oops. Oh, come on, Jenny. Okay, now stay tuned at the end of the video. I'll show you how I weave those ends in. I do also want to come back and knit one more row and show you how I address the fact that, look at that, I've got a big old gap there. I'll show you how we fix that on the next row. I'm going to go ahead and get to the end of this. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you how we seam up these pockets and weave in our ends. Okay, I'm coming up on it. See that? That's where those two tails were. I want to make sure that I do just a little tug. I want to make sure the tension is the same as the stitches around it. Knit into that one, knit into that one. And I loosened up the tension when I knit into those stitches. So then I just do it just a little tug on those tails, get everything back to where it's supposed to be. Now I let it all hang out until I'm ready to weave in those ends. We are ready to bind off. It's the same as we did before. We're going to knit into the first stitch, knit into the second stitch, lift that first one up and over. We'll do this all the way across. And when we get to the end, we can do that last stitch trick. Whoops, lift that up and over. <laughs> knit into the next one, lift that up and over all the way across and now I'm just going to do that little trick where I come down here make a little extra stitch and then knit those two together and bind off and then bring my loop up flip my yarn pull it through there we go we bound off now we're going to weave in these ends I'm going to show you how we tidy this up weave in these ends. I'll show you how we seam up the pocket. We'll seam it up here, seam it up there, and then I'll also show you, look at this, all the way in the beginning I had dropped a stitch. I secured it with a locking stitch marker and I will show you how we're going to fix that and make it all work out. So weaving in our ends, here we go. I've got a bent tip tapestry needle. And I know we're all curious, how are we going to fix this? Well, I'm going to thread this into my tapestry needle. 
and I'm looking at how these stitches are made. This next one needs to come up through here. And then this is garter stitch. So I'm going to follow this around. I'm going to pull it through here. And then I see this next stitch goes up and through there. Then back down. See how I just basically went right over that other stitch. I'm going to go up through here. I'm going to go behind this stitch right here and back down. When you're weaving in your end, you want to weave in for about an inch. So I'm going to keep going. Right across here. Come back down. And I'm seeing that it's a little fluffier than I like. So I'm going to come back over here. And I'm just going to pull on that. Bring it back up through here because I want it to match the tension for the rest of the stitches. Pull on that a little bit, pull on it there, tuck it down here, coax it with my thumb a little bit through there, come through here. I'm gonna go one more time up through here around through there whoops fell out of my needle okay there we go where did i leave off up around through here back down that looks a good okay then i'm just gonna clip it off right here there it goes now i'm gonna do the same on this side Thread my tapestry needle. Okay, I'm ready to seam up my pocket. We're gonna fold these two sides in and we're gonna seam these two sides together. I have a length of yarn threaded through my tapestry needle. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna go underneath here just to get started. I'm going to leave that out for now. And I'm going to come over here. I might have made this too long. I'm going to trim this down. This is too long to deal with here. There we go. I can add more in later if I need it. And I've gone through that purl bump. I'm going to come over here and go through this purl bump. Through that bump. this bump. So I'm going zigzag across through the pearl bump. Now you can use another stitch if you prefer. This will be on the inside of your scarf. I'm just going back and forth. And then um, when I pull it, see how that just connects right there? So yeah, I'm just jumping from side to side. Going through those little bumps. And I'm going to go back through this one. And then I'm going to come back. This is at the very top. So I'm going to pull that. Make sure it's not too tight. Come back through here. And now I'll just weave in this end. Just find a stitch and follow it through. Back through there. Through this end. Now I have this side here that I left when I began. So I'm going to go back and secure that. I want to go through 
through here to join those two. I've got a little bubble there that I want to look at. See about getting, if I can secure that. There we go. Right through there. Just like that. And I'm going to come up through here. And then I'm going to find a stitch and just start duplicating it. Okay. Now I'm going to seam up this bottom. So I have the bottom of my pocket. This right here. And I'm just going to do a simple whip stitch for this one. Let me get some yarn here. Thread my tapestry needle. And simple whip whip stitch. Go through here. I'll leave a tail that I'll weave in later. And I just go around. Push my tails out of the way. Like that. That tail. There we go. And then I'm going through two legs of of bind off stitches. And then come through here. There we go. That's all seamed up. I've got some stretch here. If I pulled on this too tightly, it would cinch it up and I don't want that. I want it to be relaxed. So I've done that. And then for this tail to weave it in, I'm just going to go through these end stitches here like that, hide it into there. And then I might just come back this way through the whip stitch, hide it through there. It's at the very end of the pocket. Nobody's going to see that. Turn it off. Look at that and then I'll do the same thing on this side flip it off and there is our pocket look at that there's our pocket pretty okay now we're gonna come back here and address this little guy this is that drop stitch I told you guys I found after everything I found this little guy hanging out. I had dropped a stitch. Now, in the grand scheme of things, this pocket's going to be sewn. Nobody's ever going to see this, but I do need to secure this because if this is let go, it will drop all the way down and then I'll, it'll, I'll have a gap and all that kind of stuff. Everything's already knitted. Um, I have a bind off right here. This is the only place that this stitch is going to count and I just need it secured. Um, I see a little gap up here. Wow, I don't even see a bar over there. Look at that. Okay, what I'm going to do is pull this through here. Oh, that's the wrong way. I need to go the other way. Okay, so I'm going to grab this stitch and bring it through there. Yep, that looks better. Then I'm going to go through that loop. So now I have it secured with the scrap yarn. See that? I'm going to bring these two together, thread my tapestry needle, then I'm going to go through right up here. Where is this was a real stitch, it would be hanging out. I'm going to pull that through there. I'm going to make sure this looks right. It looks pretty good. Then I'm going to go to this side and I'm going to weave these ends in just like I'd showed you before. We'll do that weaving in the ends and I know that stitch is secure. This is going to be on the inside of my pocket. I will sew that up. Nobody's going to see it, but I know now that that drop stitch is secure. It happens in the way that we handle it and fix it can be different for different projects, but for this one, I have looked at where the placement of it is, how it's gonna affect the grand scheme of the project, and just simply by securing it and then weaving in those ends, we're good to go. It's done, it's done. Check it out, we got pockets. Pockets are great. Who doesn't love pockets?